What's up, everybody? How you doing? It's Mike Watson coming to you live from my basement studio in Columbus, Ohio. And we have another episode of Chat and Draw. Not just any episode, but the 98th episode of Chat and Draw. We're getting up there, baby. We are, we are getting up there. It's about to be 100 in no time. 100 episodes of Chat and Draw. We're chasing it down. Naomi, what's up? How you doing? Uh, Daniel, what's up? What's good? What's good? James, how you doing? Waving to everybody. We are on. Uh, I have to bail now, brother, but thanks for allowing me in here. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for coming in here and hanging out for a little bit. We are uh, broadcasting live on Facebook, on uh, Short Fuse Media Group's Facebook page, on my YouTube page, on my Twitch page, and live on Instagram uh, through my cell phone. We want to reach as many peaceful, uh, people as we possibly can as we go rocking down chasing down 100 episodes now it's it's been a an adventurous uh these these last three or four episodes have been very challenging uh some of you may or may not know i've had some computer issues i'm actually uh my brother danny's supposed to be coming over today to look at uh, a computer and i'm supposed to be taking it to the shop so i am on the the backup of the backups and uh i'm not gonna say anything bad about it because it is allowing me to get these episodes done uh it's it's a real inconvenient time for my computer to be down uh as i'm trying to get to 100 episodes and i've done a ton of work in this last month but it's neither here nor there we'll we'll push through we'll persevere uh as we as we hit this goal and um what's up veronica how you doing uh moana's in the building i mean she she's in the building She's been in the building for like, I think Moana's been in the building for like damn near every episode. I think she's been here for every episode. And uh, shout out to her, man. Man, appreciate her so much. So what's been going on? I've been enjoying this time off with my family. We've been we've been doing a lot of family time and it, it's been fun. It's been real good. Uh, but uh, amongst that family time, I've been getting in hotshot number 11. Huh. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you do not tear up on page eight of Hotshot, you have no soul. You have no feelings at all because I'm punching you in the gut with this issue. All right. It's going to hurt. I am um, uh, eight pages in on that one. Pencils done. And Lori Foster has began begun the inks. Oh, man. <laughs> do what you love, man. Do what you love. And you may get some things that aggravate you or some things that happen because stuff happens no matter what you do. But it's easier to get through stuff that you don't like when you're doing something that you love. That's 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 my advice of the week. But let's get on with this show, people. All right, I got a guest coming on here for the first time ever. And uh, he's breaking the mold because we're doing a character unveil today on the show. First time you ever seen this character is going to be revealed today and it's a monster this look i keep getting challenged with every character that comes on this show that i have to draw but this character right here may be the most challenging because as you know it, you know what i'm gonna save that Let, let's bring my guest on mike yes yes this is a full metal alchemist shirt Absolutely, because it's one of the best animes of all time. Uh, but let's just get my guest out here, and then we can talk about this this challenge that he has put on my virtual art table that he's pushing me out here for. Let's get him out here, everybody, and in our traditional fashion. Here comes a new challenger. What up, sir? Hey, hey, hey. what's up, Mike? And that's my brother calling me right now. <laughs> Danny Cooper, if you're watching this, buddy, uh, just come on over. You you know where I live. <laughs> what up, John, baby? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. How you doing? Man, let me tell you, your boy has been enjoying the not having to get up early. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the morning sleep for me and my wife has been so, so good because the kids have been up late playing with their stuff, so they've been crashing hard. It, it, it's been a nice casual time. Good, good. I envy you. Me, I had to work. So, <laughs> oh yeah. So, oh, so 
You got three minutes left? <laughs> yes. I am. Hold on. My brother's texting me. All right. Um. So what is it that you do besides making the comics and working on the lion's den? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're talking about that today, too, brother. <laughs> um, well, I'm an arms dealer, so that's been I've been really busy lately on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this pandemic has changed a lot. It seems that everybody wants to buy guns now, so mm. that consumes a lot of my time. Um, wow. Because it's hard to be the front line to sift through all these people to make sure that those firearms don't end up in the wrong hands. So okay. it's it's a, a stressful process, but I get through it. It the more I do it, the easier that it's coming to me. So, but I've been doing it since 2013. So, I've been rolling right along. You're um, out here, Look, I'm also to... a mechanic. Okay. For uh, the transit system, Washington D.C. transit system. So I've okay. been doing that almost 19 years, and um, then I have the other stuff, the uh, comic, the comic, which is my baby. That's my 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 pride and joy, mm -hmm. and. The other stuff that I do is uh, the video editing, uh, video the creation, character creation is a lot. Like creating the the intros, like I did Moana's intro. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I tell people, y'all don't understand, editing video is harder than writing a comic. Mm. It's you know I watch you know when you watch all these spectacular movies like Avengers. And then you see all them people in the credits going up. Yeah. A lot of moving parts. I'm like, who? I need a team. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of moving parts to make it happen. So, but I'm able to do it by myself. You know, I, I hire people. I do some of it myself. I hire folk, but it gets done. Uh huh. All right. All right. All right. So, so my man is out here really selling arms. Doing doing it real life. I got this wall of uh, nerve guns, and you out here slinging that real thing. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so how long have you uh, actually? Let's, let's start off with this. The, the um, yes, Veronica Smith, you are correct. Lori is a beast. She is. Uh, what what's your origin story, John? How how did you get your superpowers in comics? How how did your love for the comics and stuff start? Uh, really, it kind of didn't start with comics um my first like growing up I, I saw people my friends had comics and stuff and I would read ones here and there you know you getting that x-men oh man this is great but it it I didn't really connect to it until spawn came along mm. uh, that was right about the time I was uh entered the military mm -hmm. so I related with Al Simmons a lot he's a marine I'm a marine um he was black and that that did something for me mm -hmm. I was a child of public enemy. So, you know, I was rebellious from the start. So <laughs> to have a character that strong, that wasn't a part of the mainstream that was indie. I was like, wow. I was like, this, this is it. And so that was where the passion first grew, but it didn't manifest fully until I became the president of a motorcycle crew. Okay. Once I became the president of a motorcycle crew, a lot of things were happening on the streets. Um, a lot of man, a lot of turmoil stuff like that is, you know, that goes along with bike life. And mm -hmm. it was such a colorful journey that I was looking at the members. I told them, I said, "Look here, we need businesses to survive, or we'll fade. Um, we need to become business orientated." So I said. This story of ours is so wild. I said, I think I'm gonna make a comic book about it. Because first I was chronicling the things that we were going through. Uh-huh. Then I was like, wait a second, I can make this into a comic book. And it's funny because when I first presented it to them, they were like, I know they were looking at me like, this dude done gone crazy. Mm -hmm. The president is crazy. But I stayed the course and and it paid off. It took us to a whole new level. And um, I haven't looked back since. So that's how I got the motivation. And a lot of the stories in the comic book um, 
are taken from things I experienced. You know, a lot of people actually say, how do you come up with this stuff? My response is simple. I lived it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, for instance, big, you got, like, you, you're doing Big Duke 6. So, um, you you saw the, you, you were the first to see the finished product. And, um, like, when you, see if I can pull it up on my phone. Yeah, right here. Okay, come on, turn just like you see that, and then you look at Big Duke Six. Mm -hmm. From the from the artwork, yeah, it's taken from me. That was in Asia when I was on deployment. I was actually in Japan at the time when okay. I took that photo. So a lot of it comes from my real life. Um, because some of the stuff I did in the military and some of the stuff we did out here on these streets, on these motorcycles, I, I've always said half the stuff we've done and seen and witnessed, people wouldn't believe it was true. They just won't believe it. It's just that it sounds that crazy. Um, so that's where a lot of my, my stuff is drawn from, things mm -hmm. I actually live. Um, people, people like to write about arms dealers. I can write about arms dealing because I am one. Mm -hmm. Um, people like to write about the military. I can write about the military because I've been there. Uh, and that's the secret to how I come up with these stories. Cause a lot of the stuff, some is embellished, some is fantasy, but a lot of it has uh, a true beginning. Context. It's rooted in truth. All right, man. So, like, let me. Uh, so let's back up a little bit because I, I, I've got tons of questions. <laughs> <laughs> talk about Big Duke Six. Let's let's uh let's talk about this character for a minute. Who he is, where he comes from. Since you've already said waiting in that, um, I, I'll obviously show his promo image once I get done with the illustration or whatnot um, okay. that I'm drawing here. Uh, and 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 this is what I'm saying. John is giving me like, don't get me wrong. This character is dope. Character looks like complete fire, but John has brought on one of my uh, weaknesses that I have been forced to draw several times on this show, which is freaking guns. Not <laughs> only is it a handgun, it's a big ass cannon blast. He's <laughs> 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 not playing. But go ahead, uh, John, tell us about this character and where he comes from and who he is. Why we should be interested in him? Okay. Side note: Before I get to that, it's funny you bring that up about the guns, because. <laughs> A friend of mine, my brother, I know you heard of him, Ken Lashley. Yeah. Yeah, he came and stayed at our house one time and all. And he we were talking about guns. And, and I said, Well, shoot, I started breaking them out, let him, you know, hold them and stuff. And, and he looked at it and he said, This really helps, you know, because if I'm drawing guns, this is useful information. I'm mm -hmm. actually looking at them. So um that also made me say, you know what? I should put this stuff in the comic book. And I think it was that conversation with him that made me say, you know what? When I do Big Duke Six, one of his one of his pride and joys is that he loves uh old school weaponry. So even in a in a futuristic cyberpunk world, he loves old school weaponry and he he lives by it. And of course, he's the arms dealer in the story. So okay. Um now, Big Duke Six is okay. You're gonna be seeing a lot of him um, in the in the story. He's called uh, CB Six, Code Breaker Six. But Big Duke Six is it, like Batman. Big Duke Six is a symbol. He's an ideal. He is um, ultimate warrior, the ultimate soldier. Mm -hmm. He is the reason why we joined the military when we come of age. We watch characters like Big Duke Six, John Rambo, um, John Matrix from Commando, uh, um, Dutch Schaefer from Predator. So he's the ultimate warrior. All right. And when, when we go in, when we join the armed forces, it's images of these type of individuals that drive us to that point. Because when we're taking that oath, I don't think we really understand how serious that oath is until we actually take it. Then we're out there doing the job. Mm -hmm. But because we had characters like that, 
that molded us, we didn't mind saying, okay, I'm willing to go out here and die to make sure America lives. I'm willing to go out here and take up that weapon and stand at post and provide that blanket of security so that American citizens can go to sleep safe at night, not worry about whether they're going to be attacked or invaded. So, and then that carried on into after the military. So I defend my house, my people, my friends with the same idea. I'll stand in there and take the bullet and return fire so that you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So, um, as CB6, he enters the story in Wildcard Chronicles, issue number three. And he, I mean, he in, he enters the comic book with a bang. Issue three is going to be really explosive. Um, Trying not to give too much away, but... Um, <laughs> hey, that's fine, man. You can give us all the spoilers you want, baby. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's really... Yeah, he, he comes in. He definitely comes in firing. Um, mm -hmm. he's also the, want to say the, the radio voice, the, the voice of the city, the underground voice of the city. Um, he's, de his designation is War Hacks 27. Basically mm -hmm. he ties into the main storyline. Um, during the last great war, every military unit had to have a War Hacks, which is a military hacker because the last great war was fought 70% 70, 70 in cyberspace, only 30% on the battlefield. So in order to get close enough to those huge mainframes to hack into them, he had to be attached to military units like SEALs, other infantry units. Everybody had a, a war hacks. And those were treated like God because getting to an objective is one thing. But the key to taking that objective is hacking into a mainframe. You need a hacker that can, that can also fight and is an expert at close hands combat. So it kind of gives, you know, people say the geek or the nerd, it kind of gives um gives you a new a different look at them. Like, wow, we've never seen a geek or a nerd in this position. Mm -hmm. Usually in any type of movie, if if a nerd guy is with a military unit, they gotta protect him and he's crying the whole time because all he knows is computers, not this guy. He graduated from the ninth uh citadel the top three in his class. So he's a warrior through and through. He just has the intelligence to hack a mainframe. Now the mask he wears um, is a cooling system mm -hmm. for uh, nanites that run through his body that he can control with his arm gauntlets. That's how he hacks in. But the reason why he has the mask and the uh, filters on the side is those, those, the, those particular nanites the technology that he's using, they have to constantly be cooled, constant, constant, constant. So um, as they're as they're working, they're also filtering off the heat. So when you see the smoke or the steam coming from those canisters, that's the nanites uh, peeling off, uh, shedding off the heat, so they can go back to work. Okay. So um, he he's a deep character, and he so he's he is got, impressive. So there's steam co um, coming off his suit at different times. Not his not his suit. Just you see um, the mask. Oh, he's the mask. Yes. So okay. when you see him, those are the nanites vet venting steam because you know those processors, man, they consume a lot. Of, they they burn a, a lot of heat. Um, even at work, the the processing room for the building, mm -hmm. it is hot in that thing. I mean, we keep the door closed, like whoo. I think the things are putting out a lot of heat. So um, I worked it into his storyline. So like I said, I pull a lot of what I do from real things that I deal with daily. That's what's up. So I, I get, to get a little technical with how I'm drawn right now, uh, because of how his suit is designed and the symmetry of it, right now I am drawing with the symmetry tool. I don't know if anybody saw that or was wondering, like, how was he drawn on both sides at the same time? Um, let's see here. I'll do the replay of the video for you guys. So once I got this laid out to the way that I, that I like the design or whatnot, um, his mask is very symmetrical. So I pulled out the symmetry tool, which allows me to draw on both sides at the same time. But wow. I'm probably ready to turn it off now because now I got his, the rest of his body is in different positions or whatnot. But it really helps you lay out how this thing is going to look so everything is the same. So as you can see, like now, yeah, how it's popping up. Boom, boom, boom. I drew all that at the same time here. Symmetry Truel on Procreate is dope. Um, 
just a little heads up for anybody that's got Procreate or looking to, you know, looking at new things to use for Procreate. It's very helpful. So right now I'm turning off the drawing assist. And now we're going back to the regular. So with all this going on with this character and how um you know in depth he is and coming from your career, when when did he get created? So when did it pop up in your head and say, I need to make Big Duke Six? Like, like is there is there a story behind it or did something happen where you're like, this would make off as the one of the dopest characters? Like how, how, where was that spark for him? Okay, the spark from him actually came pretty recent. Um I, I fit him in, and I'll tell you how it happened. But with the creation of Blunt Force Media, okay? Um, I was, I said, well, you know, I have different reporters, you know, different for uh, Blunt Force Media. And then uh, in YouTube, we started to realize there were military elements at work with um, Obsidian X. And um, as you see towards the end of issue two, you see the the uh, cryo chamber that that is holding mayhem, Jefferson Braddock designation mayhem, because uh, they all came out the same graduating class of the Ninth Citadel. But we get into that later. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, well, wait a second. If I need a reporter, and with this stuff coming up, as far as then the pandemic hit, like coming into twenty twenty, I said, well, you know what. I think one of the reporters for Blunt Force Media should be Big Duke Six. So Big Duke Six is going to have his own show. All right. So his reporting is brutal because he lives up to the title, Blunt Force Media. So he's going to report and talk about a lot of topics that people are afraid to touch. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a lot of theatrics with him and stuff like that. But yeah, he'll report. So I said, well, you know what? Because most of the characters in my story are stuff real people. I said, well, right. I'm going to put Big Duke Six up in there. And he meshed well with the story, so I went with it. Okay. Oh, awesome. So, how far are we in uh, production on, on Big Duke Six? Are, um, is this going to be a limited series, ongoing series, special special edition? Okay, so with him, it, it, a lot of things will happen as far as because he enters in issue three, a part of the Wild Card Chronicles. Mm -hmm. um, but because of his relation to Obsidian X, which is uh, Atticus, and uh, Mayhem, which is Braddock, and because all three of them came out of the Ninth Citadel, eventually there'll be a spinoff. But for right now, he's 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 going to show up in the Chronicles itself because he ties in a lot of the wild card chronicle history how we got to this point because in issue one like on page two um it kind of starts off when i created wild card chronicles i kind of took a page out of uh the star wars because mm -hmm. you know we all love star wars growing up right, so, right, right. uh wild card chronicle kind of starts in the middle like episode four five six um when on the second page of issue one it's it's the future, and you see Nuri's hand on two books. His hand is on one of the books of the Chronicles. So at that point, two Chronicle books have already been written. Big Duke Six ties into both the first two Chronicle books. So um, it kind of starts in the middle because then it goes back in time. So you basically seeing these characters, not Big Duke Six. You seeing Big Duke Six as he is. But you see in the younger characters like Nuri grow. Because you Let start me stop you for a second. Mm -hmm. What kind of gun is this that he's rocking? That's an M16 with an M203 grenade launcher on it. The fourth mm -hmm. version is the M4, but same same weapon. M16 with a, a grenade launcher? Mm-hmm. The M203. I need to grab some reference real quick. Oh, cool, cool. Go all right. You go ahead, you go ahead and finish the story. I'm looking. <laughs> Looking for this dang gun now. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't want to put too much pressure on you, brother. No pressure. Hey, hey, everybody does it. it, it it's part of it's part of the fire, baby. That's what I I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, but yeah, we kind of started in the middle because I wanted the younger cast to grow. I didn't want to just start out with a bunch of people with superpowers and okay. then tell their backstories later. I wanted our audience to see those characters grow, see the flaws in those characters, see them make their mistakes as they develop. Um, Big Duke Six and Obsidian X, they're not really superheroes. They're just the heroes of the story that get you to the next level. You start to, because they're put in place so that you can see where the Deadly Seven got a lot of their influence from. Mm -hmm. And they became great. You'll sell them to Big Duke Six and Atticus and even Mayhem in the Deadly Seven when they come onto the scene. But that's the third Chronicle book. Okay. So um, I, I didn't want to, you know, I think the reason why, uh, like, and then you start to get it, like, for instance, DC Comics, you know, one thing that, that I think hurts them is that everybody in the Justice League, they're like demigods. They're all, they start off super powerful, so it's it's really not, not a lot in the flaws category. I think that's why Batman is their most beloved character because he's he's not super powered and he's flawed, uh -huh. and and his the 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 different versions of Robin that he bring in all of them are flawed. So people like that because they can relate to it. Same thing with Spider Man; he's flawed. He's just a kid trying to make it. So. People can relate to that. So I didn't want to start off with people with a bunch of superpowers. Like I said, Big Duke Six, Obsidian X, they don't have superpowers. So um, that's a very good point. Don't mind me. I just realized that I have toys. <laughs> I'm up here looking for a dang M16 grenade launcher, and I know I have one. <laughs> Matter of fact, I do have one right here on my Halo figure. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> the man had to go find one real quick. I'm like, there you go. 700 toys over here. What am I doing looking for something <laughs> online? All right. Okay, let's let's play there, baby. So I, I think you make a um I think you make a valid point. Uh and that's why I kind of always seen DC Comics as uh as the higher tier, as the god, as the gods, you know, mm -hmm. superheroes and things like that. And then I look at Marvel Comics as the everyman, the every person type of characters. They're more relatable. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also why DC characters are, are, are maybe more known because of the stature of their characters of Superman, Wonder Woman. Um, you know, those godlike type of beings. That's how, and that's how they're seen and viewed in the world. But then you don't really see a lot of everyday problems. problems. <clears throat> with them. And I'm not saying that they don't do stories like that. Or I just feel like um, I agree with you. I just don't feel like that's where their focus is or that's what they're known for. They're, they're put on a pedestal, their characters are, versus Marvel's characters. You know, we put them in the mud. We kick them when they're down. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So I, I definitely like where you're going uh, with this character. I'm glad I put this on its own layer. See, I knew I was. Hey, don't don't mind me complaining because I I need this. Hey, <laughs> this this is why I do the show because I uh I wanted to draw characters that I don't normally draw, which I've had plenty of them on here. I want to continue working on drawing female characters, and while I complain about drawing guns, um. I've, I've kicked out some pretty good guns, so <laughs> this is the first time I'm drawing an M16 on the show, but, you know, we'll, we'll get through it. As best as we can. Mm, mm, mm. So let's, let's talk about the, uh, the lines then. So mm. I, I remember I first saw the promo for it and i was like the hell what are we doing now and, uh, <laughs> it was so funny because coincidentally when i saw your promo i saw um who are they called the, the expensive ass toy company who sideshow sideshow yeah <laughs> i saw their little sp uh spot their little spin off that they were doing yeah um and i was like is is, is john a sp is he sponsored 
Yeah, it, it's about to be that way. <laughs> I was like, because then you were kicking. I was like, you had one little figure out there, and I was like, oh, that's a nice sculpt. All right, all right, he collecting. And then I saw another one, and then another one, and another. I was like, hold it up, man. What's all, where's all this fire coming from? And, and I ain't done like, yet. Like, you not? <laughs> How much more you got to get? Joe, <laughs> I, know, I still got stuff floating out there, and I done created monsters. One of my co workers, he done got hooked. Now he mm. out there buying. He like, man, I pulled the trigger on Doomsday. I said, really? He said, yeah, I was on the waiting list. <laughs> he said, I got it now. Um, well, that's how that go when you, uh, that is exactly how that go. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So, how did this start? Like, what is okay? What, what's the uh, how did this start? What's the okay. end game? And you know, walk us through how you pick which uh, sculpts you get. Okay, all right. This is how it started. I'm gonna. I'm, I, you gotta blame it on San Diego and New York Comic Con. Okay, they can <laughs> take uh, that. Away. We're regulars at both of those. Mm -hmm. So, it, about 2014, 2015, I noticed it, whether it's New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con. I'm gonna tell you right now, Sideshow has the biggest booth in the center of the floor. They got the biggest booth, period, on the floor. Okay, That's at both. They, they join is bigger than Marvel. You can always find Marvel because they're right next to uh, Sideshow. And Mar Marvel's setup is really big. So you can imagine if it's bigger than Marvel's, it's pretty big. Right. Um. So I'm looking at these statues. I'm like, man, these are nice. And so each year, going to New York and going to San Diego on it, and then I think what really kicked it off is when I saw, I think it was two San Diego's ago, I saw uh, Green Lantern. Because that was the first piece that was the Green mm -hmm. Lantern. Um, uh, the, 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 the John Stewart. So I'm like, man, this is nice. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. Because, you know, people have unboxings and stuff of these things. They've made whole shows out of them. Yeah. Um, and But the thing was, not a lot of People of color were doing it. So I said, you know what? Shoot, we in this thing deep too. So why not? So I, I Green Lantern was the first piece I got. All right. And then it just spiraled out of control from there. So I start picking pieces. Most believe it or not, the way I pick my pieces is I have to be able to see a way to um I have to see a story behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, like for instance. To see black man in that powerful or structured as uh, that Green Lantern that I had, I was like, wow, I've never seen that. You know, it kind of took me aback the way people were taken aback when they first saw Black Panther. Yeah. So, you know, like I got my Panther statue. I've never seen black people in a powerful position like that. Okay. Just didn't happen. So then I just started, you know, my love of Batman because everybody loves Batman. Um, not everybody. Oh, my, other, real? my other brother Ren hates him for real. Well, he hates him. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I agree. The, the majority of people do love him. I mean, Batman has a lot of good moments, man. You can't you he can't does. deny that. Your boy is bad. Like I, yeah. I enjoy him. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I do too. Um, and I it seems like he's their cash cow because they love making movies. But they just announced another movie they're gonna make. I'm like, oh. yeah, they did, but that one doesn't look so good to me. They I, they could have kept that one. Yeah, I'm like, oh, they really milking this Batman cow for all it's worth. Okay, <laughs> I'm <gonna> sell it. <laughs> so, like for instance, um, XM Studios, their Arkham line. Uh, mm -hmm. All of those are based off the video game. Uh, their Arkham line is incredible. A lot of the stuff you've been seeing, like that, um, the white Batman, that all white one, mm -hmm. uh, all that is taken from the Arkham video games. XM Studios did the line, I think, and I'm going to do a funny show about the Robin because they did the best upgrade of Robin I've ever seen. Okay, and I'm I don't want to say too much because when I do that episode, it's gonna be kind of funny. Uh, but their upgrade of Robin was awesome, and the pieces are rare, and they appreciate with value. 
They okay. only make a certain amount of each piece and they appreciate with value. It'll also teach um, the young urban community about buying things that appreciate with value versus things that depreciate with value. Okay, I see where you're going with this. And, that, and that's the main drive. So when I bring these statues on and I talk about them, and I tell you about the artist who and the sculptor who did it, and there are only like certain pieces I have, there are only like 200 of them in the world. We have to leave these babies something. We can't mm -hmm. leave them iPhones. That crap don't hold no value. Mm. Can't leave them that. <laughs> okay. We need to leave them something that down the road people will pay them to come see. I purchase museum grade statues. You know, things that can help them pursue their dreams easier. Because if we don't leave them anything, then they have to start from scratch. But if they have things like homes, property, things that appreciate with value that are already paid for, they understand generational wealth. And that's what you need to survive. You got to be thinking four or five generations ahead. Mm -hmm. We kind of struggle with that. But things are starting to change. We're starting to go in different directions. And uh, the Lions, then we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. A lot of those episodes are going to be really funny. Uh, uh, we'll also bring different people on to talk about different things. It's not just the statues. The lines then will be everything pop culture. It's just the statues will be like the catalyst, the launch pad. <clears throat> yeah, man, because when you see some of these pieces, you're like, wow, somebody put their heart and soul into that. Oh, no, bro. I, I've been I've been watching your page. I, I see it when they pop up. Uh, I, yeah. I love, like I said, I love your promo bits for it. I think it is I think it's so very dope. Oh, thank um, you, man. And, I, and I've seen, and I'm a toy collector. Like people have seen my studio here, man. I, I've, I've just actually, I'm probably gonna show people my um on 100th episode. I'm gonna show people my MCU Marvel Legends toy. I don't, I don't collect sculpts, but mm -hmm. I do collect toys. So I, I really appreciate the promo bits for it. I love the what you put together with your videos for it. Like your stuff, and I, I hope people don't take this as a um this, but I, your shit looks name brand. Like oh. you look like a sculpting toy company promoting sculpts. Yeah. You don't, you don't look you. like somebody in their house putting things together. It looks professional as hell. Thank you. Hopefully sideshow number seeing that. Hey, come on and help us out. <laughs> hey. They they need to. What up, J-Man in the building? J-Man's another one of our uh, viewers who have seen damn near every single episode. I I don't think J I, I don't I think J-Man hasn't missed one. He watches uh Agents of Nerdy and he watches Chat and Draw. Appreciate you, Jay Man. As we we're we're close to that hundredth, baby. <clears throat> yeah, man. Congratulations. You moving right along, brother. I'm trying to, man. It's it's been um like it, it it's been a lot. Like I've enjoyed it very much. Again, drawing these different characters and stuff has pushed my education on procreate i'm not saying like i'm i'm the be it end all know all of everything on it but it has definitely helped my craft and helped me understand the program better i was able to do hot shot number 10 pencils and inks in like a month and a half throughout the whole book and now i got the whole book laid out for issue 11. uh lloyd foster is picking up those inks for me though because her inks are godlike so uh <laughs> we're, we're passing those over here but able to just you know take this pick this thing up and take whatever i go and just draw has been awesome <clears throat> man you're getting it done man that's impressive and right now i'm working on this m16 trying to bring this bad boy to life we're gonna see what we can do so i love what you're doing with the lines then i, I love that it's more than just um more than just collecting sculpts for you and i like how you uh and i like how you put that 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 element to it of for you to get something there has to be a story for it with you like you yeah. have to see a story in it um and it, it it gets so much more weight uh to that because i remember that promo for that green lantern skull yeah. and that, <laughs> that that gives the story so much more like like it, it, it almost puts me in your shoes as the person buying it. Like that's no, nope. I like that. Yeah, man. We 
uh, that that Green Lantern caught my attention. It's some other ones that caught my attention that I missed out on. I was like, so I call them my holy grails. Uh, mm. I've been able to get some of. I think what really put me over was the Batman, um, the Arkham line Batman in the XC uh, anti freeze suit. That one really put it over. I said, you know what? I'm doing this. And I missed out on them it just by a blessing that I caught somebody that was selling one and I got it off them for pretty much the same thing but for retail. So I was like, wow, I made out because a lot of those statues, man, you you miss them. Next time you see them, they'll be on eBay for like $50,000. You're like, whoo. So, um, but yeah, that one did it for me. It, it showed... And the reason why it resonated with me, it showed how resilient Bruce Wayne is and his stance with him coming up those steps in that suit with them fists clenched is like, this is a man. He's only a man, but he's ready for a fight and he's mm. not going down easy. Um, That really resonated with me. Uh. There was this one art piece that was a commission, um, and only DC fans would, would really get would understand it. It's a piece that Ken Lashley did for a commission. Mm -hmm. and it was Batman, and all you could see with his back was his back with his cape flowing, and directly in front of him, looming over top of him, was um, uh, Dark Side. This man is standing toe to toe with Dark Side. Now, anybody that knows DC Comics understand. Wow, that is a powerful image, because even though on paper you're thinking Batman ain't got a chance, you know from Batman history you never can count him out of a fight. Yeah, just like Absolutely. Mike. Tyson. See what I'm saying? Just like Mike Tyson, the last thing was a power. So, <laughs> just like that fight he had with Roy Jones. It was so funny because I'm watching it and he's tying Mike's arms up. And I heard the referee uh, say to Roy Jones, stop clinching him. Stop clinching him. Let him go. And Roy Jones says to the referee, hell no. Nah, let him go. He'll kill me in here. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you can never count Batman out of a fight. So Dude. seeing that art, that piece of artwork, I'm, I'm telling you, I want that piece. I'm like, that's an awesome piece. To see him standing toe to toe with Dark Side, it just it sent chills through me. Like, wow. So, um, another thing I like about the art pieces, um, seeing them bring comic book covers to life. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a piece, uh, Wolverine versus the Hulk from that cover. Yeah. Um man, it is awesome to see that. That's I think that's where Wolverine first appeared. And they they were able to sculpt that cover into life. I got another Batman and I haven't put that one on yet. Um that was taken from the New 52 Jim Lee edition and they brought him to life. That same pose from the comic book is in a, a 3D sculpture. So I'm okay. like, wow, I'll be putting a lot of those on on display on the lines then. That sounds incredible. I uh, definitely know where you're coming from. Um, I think uh, one of my biggest toy purchases, which is still my most memorable one, was at uh, C2E2. Mm. And uh, they did, they released, I didn't know they were doing this that weekend. Luckily, luckily, mm -hmm. I had a good weekend at the show where I could do this without regret. Uh, because this is when I, we were first starting out going to shows and hitting combo conventions. And um, I was walking the floor and I'd found like where they were doing the Lord, they were showcasing the Lord of the Ring toys. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge, huge, huge Lord of the Ring fan. I only watch the extended editions, I have them all. I have a huge play set over here with the Lord of the Ring. <laughs> uh, and I saw people started to gather around. I was like, man, what's going on? And um, weeks prior, I had been looking for this toy, and they refused to release it because Walmart and Target won't carry it. And if Walmart and Target won't carry it, your toy won't survive. Wow. 
So I just gave up on it. And then, and we're at the show and everybody, this dude got up and started talking and he pulled the cover off of this toy and it was the Balrog from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like, it was as big as me. Yeah. <laughs> moving arms, moving tail, moving wings, light up effects. And they said they had a certain amount of them on sale today. Look, mm-hmm. now I tell you, I'm not a violent person. <laughs> <laughs> but when I say I push people out the damn way, <laughs> I push people out the damn way. And I like, it was like $300 that weekend uh-huh. and I bought it. Like that is the biggest toy purchase I've ever done in my life. But like, I felt like that was worth it, man. Cause I didn't know they were going to release it. I didn't know that was happening. And like that, thing, it is gorgeous. Like I have him, I'm looking at him now. I got him facing off against Gandalf the white right now with his fire sword. And like, it's, it's a pride of my collection. So I definitely feel you when you see something you like and it speaks to you. <laughs> man, I know. And Prime One just revealed in the last couple of months, they just revealed their Lord of the Rings line. It's awesome. Oh, really? Yes. Your Balrog, they got that. Uh, Balrog versus Gandalf. Uh-huh. They have it. I didn't check the price on it because I know it ain't cheap, but they oh, I, know. That. I think the piece that impressed me the most that they just released was Aragorn with the Ghost Army. That oh, drink man. is nice. I was like, Mo. John, that I don't think I can nice. you anymore. Huh? You about to have me out here. Yo, <laughs> you, I didn't get cats addicted because, and they say, well, how do you afford them? I say, this is what you do. <laughs> I said, when they release the piece, they allow you to pre-order like sometimes a year, almost two years in advance. Mm. That's when you do it. They, they'll require like a hundred dollar deposit and then it'd be like $80 a month until the piece comes out. So okay. a lot of people wait too late they be like oh shoot i missed it and so now you gotta come out pocket like full price it's not being paid for all at one time it's just a little bit a lot of the stuff you see in here was already on pre-order okay they just taking a little bit at a time a little bit at a time until it's paid off and then all of a sudden like i told her i said we about to get overrun because a lot of stuff i put on pre-order last year this time it's all about to get shipped to the house so yeah man that's that's how collectors do it all right all right uh danny cooper uh brad says batman and dark side hell yeah uh <laughs> danny says watching two towers right now moana's like let's go to mordor yes the ball rod <laughs> danny says your ball rod looks like gandalf whooped his ass it's been through the ring it has i've had like i've had it since the release and it that must have been over over 10 years over 10 years um i was thinking about because uh, through moving and stuff, the wings have gotten broken, so I've had to do some self-repair on it. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about, like, all right, man, I really do dig this toy. Let's see if I can replace it. Nah. Mm. <laughs> the price for it is skyrocketing. It's triple what it was. Uh, and uh, so those, those big toy, par- toy purchases I don't do anymore. And uh, I've – I've because uh, a lot of my toys I got when I was in college, you know, I was, I was solo. I was getting mm-hmm. a stipend check back from, from the school. <laughs> I was living as an RA, didn't have to pay no rent, no food, nothing. I was out here kicking it. Uh, but <clears throat> I I found my holy grail right now is the Millennium Falcon. Oh my God. Not 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 the like the the bad boy, the fully one that you could take apart yeah. with all the little ink kits with the lights. That's my holy grail right yeah. now. And um freaking um What's the other ship that just got added to it? Uh, Mandalorian ship. Yeah, yeah. Now, I need comic book adventures to come back so I can go to the show exactly. and clean up like I do. <laughs> so I can get these. Like I told my wife, like, like I like I love hot toys, but I'm not gonna buy any hot toys. They're they're, they're super expensive. But like, dude, the kid in me, I have always wanted the Millennium Falcon. Me too. I had oh. one as a kid, so. I'm definitely looking for a newer version. I'm, I'm like, whew, that's what I have to go ahead and get because that's my thing. I told my wife, I said, look here, I love the way Mandalorian ended. It really, yeah. I mean, the season finale was awesome. It was great. But my wife knows the greatest thing to me 
is Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon show up. And to see him interact with Boba Fett post Return of the Jedi after being frozen in Carmenite, oh my God. I paid money to see that. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a very good chance that, that could happen, man. Yes, I please. <laughs> I think there's a very good chance that that can happen. Yeah, because my, my favorite I liked Luke Skywalker, but my favorite character was Han Solo. Always was Han Solo. Dude, he's a bandit, man. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Fox Fox Chris. Moana said you're a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> hey, man, I uh, I told uh, I was, I'm on this Marvel uh, uh, this Marvel Legends Collectors Group. Uh -huh. uh, that's how I found a bunch of my Marvel figures for super cheap. Uh, and uh, I jumped back in there because uh, my MCU set is almost complete. There's some figures I'm still missing. And uh, I've been like sculpting um, mm -hmm. debris and destruction, like the Avengers Mansion broken yeah. um, for my setup. And so I jumped back in there like, yeah, man, Christmas is over. I've already through all my kids to take care of. It's back on me now. I'm looking for these toys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, mm, having a good time here, man. Yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I got a ton of hot toys. I, I, my, my, uh, I'm turning my theater room to a Star Wars theme, so all my Star Wars hot toys are going in the theater room. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm big on hot toys. I've slowed down recently, but I still keep my eye out on certain pieces. I dig it. I dig it. Which one is your? Uh, I know this is hard to ask anybody, any collector. But which one is your favorite? Which one is the? Is is the is the jewel of the group? <laughs> um, with hot toy, just the hot toys. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know that's a hard question. Mm. Oh man, let me think. I would have to. Well. You know what? Believe it or not. <laughs> Hold on. Let me look. I'd have to say the most impressive hot toy I have would be probably the, the least one you would expect. Mm. My John Wick. Really? John Wick. That hot toy is savage because the all his guns. Maybe that one relates to me because the M16 AR-15 uh, version. He's got the shotgun. You can you can load the shells in. I mean, he, it's an impressive piece. I was like, "Woo, yeah, my John Wick." Oh, you can load the shells in the actual gun. Yeah, he has like the the, the thing slides. Oh, in the magazines, you can load the magazines into the gun, and the shotgun is the same way with the extra shells. So I got imposed with both with the shotgun and the uh, the AR is on a sling. Like on his body. Matter of fact, let me see. I might because I'm right next to him. Let's about to pull this thing. Let me see. Just about to fall out of here. Hey, here. I'm, I respect John Wick. That's my homie. I got the uh, I got the Shig Fig Arts version of John Wick right now. Oh, for real? Oh yeah, love that movie. You see him? Hold up. I'm making a circle oh, okay. right now. <laughs> oh, shoot. Hold that bad boy is bad. Yeah, he's my favorite. I think... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this right now, uh, John. This is the most time I've ever spent on a gun. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 this is the most time I've ever spent on a gun. And I thought I chose the easiest angle possible to draw this mug. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think it, it's definitely uh, that, that that's a, that's one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, the conversation with somebody uh, uh-huh. will definitely dictate how the drawing goes. <laughs> <laughs> And I've definitely spent a lot of time on here detailing off this weapon of destruction here. <laughs> yeah, so when when me and the uh, artist was going back and forth on it, fleshing it out, and I thought it was going to be a challenge for him too. So a couple days he came back, and when he finished, I was like, you nailed it. I was like, Damn, you nailed it, man. <laughs> so how did that so how, take us to that process? How did that work? Did you send him um reference pictures mm-hmm. or was it just a conversation about the character? Both. It okay. was a conversation and references. Even some of my old military pictures. Mm-mm-mm. I've never gone three layers on a gun, but I'm going three layers on a gun right now. (laughs) Got to make sure this bad boy sings. Because, like, if if a character's arsenal doesn't look like it can bring the noise, the type of violence that they incur, then it's like, what's the point of even drawing it? I feel you. I also chose that weapon for its realism because it's an actual real weapon that people can relate to. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, I sell ARs, AR-15. So, um, I mean, I, being a, a firearms dealer, I'm exposed to a lot. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, it's a very popular firearm. It's one of the most controversial and polarizing weapons of our age. I mean, the media has really made a big firestorm out of the AR-15. And I I think some of the stuff they say is so funny. Like they say, these are assault weapons. I'm like, it's a weapon. Every weapon is meant to assault. What are you talking about? (laughs) I don't care if it's a 22 handgun. You firing at your assault. You fire at somebody, you're assaulting them with it. So, I don't understand the logic behind that. He said every weapon is designed to assault people. I'm like, wow. I mean, nobody forges a sword to cut a cake. You ain't cut meat with a sword. You, you, a sword is a weapon. Now, the Marine Corps is the only place that we forge a sword to cut a cake. Because on the Marine Corps birthday, the oldest Marine and the youngest Marine in the unit takes the, the sword and cuts the, the cake, the birthday cake of the Marine Corps. November 10th, 1775. Okay. And we celebrate that birthday religiously. It's always uh, right around Veterans Day. So, yeah. that We don't Never knew that. cakes with swords. <laughs> Never knew that. That's a first. Learning things on Chat and Draw, episode 98. I'm imagining the rest of this figure should be pretty easy for me once I get this gun taken care of. That was the that was the challenge this episode. I mean, you're you're the gun guy, John. I hope I'm I'm doing your gun justice. Yes, you are, my friend. Indeed, you are. Let's see, I'm gonna uh, send you this. Uh, see. All right, I think. Oh, wait, 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 what layer am I on? Let me merge these two down. Good, good, good. I think I am ready to. Now, I did notice this little trick about guns, especially if you make them black. Uh, that one side, there's always one side that is like 
a, a nice shade of uh, black mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing them in comics. So you can always get, as long as you got the out, outlining shape pretty mm -hmm. straight, you can get away with that. Uh, so I've, I've tried to master that. <laughs> yeah. All right. My man's gun is done. <laughs> now we can get into the actual character. Although that, that's an unfair statement. The, the, uh, as, as you've already said and described, the gun is part of his character. Yeah. All right. Now I am, I am going back to my draw sis though. Because I'm going back into this mask. Uh, so that's uh, if, if anybody is learning or questioning or wanting to know about Procreate. Um, so uh, his mask and his hood, uh, I want to do symmetrical. So I want to draw one side of it. And as I'm drawing that side, the computer or the iPad will draw the other side for me. It'll match me stroke for stroke. Uh, so the first thing I do is I open up a separate layer. I click drawing assist as it's marked there. And then I go over here and I put the drawing guide on. I want to edit the drawing guide and make sure I have symmetry, uh, symmetry picked. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's a green dot here and a blue dot there. And there's a line in the middle. That's how you know it's done. So you click done, and now I'm going to kind of make my ink pen a little bit smaller, and we're going to go in. And then you're going to see as I draw this, it is going to mimic what I do. And actually, I need to have that boy start off at the point. So now I'm about to start adding in all this jazzy detail that I see. This is the cool thing that I really enjoy because I hate drawing masks and things like this um, head on. And actually, I picked this up from a, a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Terry. Uh, and he is who I call the uh, print master at comic book conventions. Uh, and I've got first hip to symmetry, to the symmetry tool. Um, I think he does it in um, Adobe Illustrator, though. But he's the first person I saw that like did it and made it look great. Terry Huddleston. Hmm. Noise, noise. So, what were the design inspirations for uh the hoodie and the mask? Can you hear me, John? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. my mic was oh, muted. No problem. I did a lot of um uh cyberpunk mask references, you know. Um I'm telling you, you, you can get a, a lot of ideas just looking at different ways people presented what they felt a cyberpunk mask would be. So I, what I did was I used cyberpunk elements and elements of the old gas mask I used when I was in the military. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. I'm gonna send you this, Mike. Let me see. Get this address. Yeah, Moana. Um, I've just recently started messing around with this feature when I have um things like this. Um, I could have used it before, but I didn't. It didn't occur to me to use it because there's there's so many features here on Procreate. I haven't even cracked the surface. Like, there's a bunch of brushes that you can download into it. I haven't even deep dived into any of the brushwork because that's that's a whole another rabbit hole all on its own. You just sent me something, John. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, what did this dude send me? I could not be your friend over your house. Yeah. <laughs> 
What is this? Ah! That's the new one. John is out here playing games. <laughs> John is out here playing games. Don't do that to me. Oh, my. I don't need this in my life, John. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like Darth Vader, I'm converting you up. Oh, my goodness. Join me, and I will complete your training. <laughs> Dark side, John. All right. <laughs> that thing looks gorgeous. Beast, ain't it? Oh my goodness. Instagram got to see what I was looking at. John just sent me a link to that ball rock versus Gandalf. He out here trying to tempt me. Tempt fake. <laughs> mm. That thing looks ridiculous. Do you, do you see that? So much trouble. Like that was just easy. I just drew, and and then I feel you feel super confident. You know, you can draw as much as you want on the other side. The only penalty is is that when you draw this character at different angles, you got to draw all this stuff the regular way. <laughs> yeah, it looks good, man. It really looks good. Thank you. I think I'm gonna do. I was like that. That's what I really like is uh, your boy definitely um, especially in the first image that you sent me, he reminds me of the uh, uh, like something that would hunt the predator. Yes, yeah, a lot of inspiration from uh, old Dutch Schaefer and the crew, the Predator crew, the Special Forces unit. I just feel like uh, after that first mission. Or even after the the New York sequel, mm -hmm. that this would be the result. Yeah, like, now we're looking for predators. Definitely, definitely a lot of. I love that. And in case some of you guys are wondering what that is, uh, once you have a shape blocked off or lined off, rather, um, it's it's like the selection tool without selecting it. Once you have a uh, area blocked off, you can just click, you can just drag that color and drop it right in there. <clears throat> it's a it's a great time saver, man. I, uh, I absolutely love drawing on the iPad. Mm -mm -mm. I need to save as much as I can here with your boy. Cause he looks like a, a, a flat out monster. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I really do like the design of this character. Definitely not anybody that I would play with. So, uh, in in Geekdom, are you mm -hmm. a, a Cobra Kai fan? Yes, indeed. Did you uh, watch season three yet? Uh, huh? No, I haven't watched it yet. I, my wife said it dropped. Uh, was it yesterday? Day before yesterday? Look, man, it dropped yesterday, and uh, because we saw a commercial, a little promo bit for it on Facebook, I was like, "Oh shoot!" I thought that was next week. It's this week. Yeah. So, uh, we had we uh had dinner, and as we ate dinner, we uh we watched the first episode, and then uh, we got finished with that. We went downstairs and watched the rest of it. Before we knew it, we had finished it. Like it's, mm -hmm. hey. Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. Cobra Kai makes Karate Kid that much better. Yes, it does. It does. Yes, it does. I didn't wait. She told me they had dropped it because they were going to drop it later in January. Yeah. I saw something saying that they were going to go ahead and drop it earlier. And then that's when my wife hit me and said, Oh, it's, it's, it's out. I'm like, Oh, my God. I can't wait. <laughs> Yo, it's, oh, dude, it's worth every bit. It's worth every bit. Like they gave you everything you wanted in that bad boy. <sighs> oh, 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 I can't wait. At least for me. At least for me, they did. Yeah, I remember when it first came out. I said, man, I was watching it. My wife's watching. I said, man, they didn't brought back Karate Kid. This joint is good. Hey, it's it's definitely good. Uh they pull on the heartstrings very well with the old with the old movies. 
uh, it's very well uh, incorporated in there. Uh, these kids are reckless, man. I tell you that. <laughs> I was rolling, you know, with the, you know, the last season. I'm like, Jokers have turned the high school into a war zone. <laughs> hey. And they said, how do we top that? I how know. do we fight the high school war zone fight scene? They top it, brother. They top oh. it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's how the rest of my weekend is going to be spent. Now, Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna have to start like to keep because like there's so much stuff that comes out, man. Um, I think I'm gonna have to start a list throughout the year and call it my year list and just put a list of all the things out here that just uh that I love that I enjoy because Cobra Kai came out last it came out in 2020 season two mm -hmm. on Netflix and I forgot it came out then and we're 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 getting ready to do our Agents of Nerdy year end show like our our top shows and stuff of the year and i didn't even consider cobra kai but i'm like cobra kai was one of my favorite things but i've been blown away by mandalorian i kind of forgot about it but that was so mm -hmm. long ago but i, I can't yeah. forget about cobra kai because it is it, it's dope exactly i can't wait I'm, i've been waiting for this because once mandalorian was over i was like oh so I mean, it hurts. I, I'm like, oh, come on, man. They got to give us more episodes of Mandalorian. They, they hurt me this this 12-month wait. I... Yeah, but they, they figured they about to have so much other content out coming out that we're going to be good. When is that uh, Winter Soldier Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming out? Uh, that's coming out in March, but uh, WandaVision comes out in less than 10 days. Oh, oh okay. More, like, be I'm sorry, January 15th. Okay. That'll be interesting. Oh, I'm yeah. Skeptical I'll, on that one, though. Huh? I'm kind of skeptical on that one, though. Don't be. Don't be. <laughs> WandaVision is the start of, like, WandaVision starts it off, and that arc finishes in Spider-Man 3. It goes okay. from WandaVision directly to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and concludes in Spider-Man 3. Okay. All right. So I'll give it a shot. Because from the promoter, I was like, Man, I don't want to see. No, like, oh, man. They... <laughs> no, John. Trust me. You want to see this. You want to see this because this is this is going to be the start of so much stuff. Each episode <laughs> is going to be themed by a a, a traditional um, sitcom that we all love, uh -huh. like classic sitcoms. Each episode is going to be combined that, but it's literally wind up breaking down and going insane. Wow. Uh, Monica Rambo is going to be in it. Oh, for real? Adult Monica Rambo is going to be in it. Okay. You piqued my interest on that one. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so it's going to directly lead into Doctor Strange. And it seems like Wanda's going to be the villain in Doctor Strange. Wow. She's creating her kids in this one. Uh, the two twins that uh -huh. have the kids. They're, they're, they're going in, man. Wow. What other shows? I know they had some WandaVision. Wasn't it a, a oh the Loki show? Looking Loki. forward to the I, man, I'm looking dude, I'm looking forward to all of Marvel shows. That Loki show looks great. Yeah, <laughs> I was impressed with the look. I said, oh, okay. Look like they're going to take it in a nice direction. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the one I'm waiting on. Oh, oh yeah. We all waiting for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to how they do it. What's up, Cat? How you doing? Uh, I'm looking forward to the story, what they're going to do with that story. I want to see Sam and Winter interact so very much. Uh, I love that each time we see Sam, his flight mode goes God mode. Each time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That trailer with him flying on against those ships, that was that was Rogue Squadron level right there. Mm -hmm. I'm so I'm, mad I missed out on uh on his hot toy. Mm. It's really expensive if you want him now. He is really expensive. Because that um, damn show, they know what they're doing, man. Yes, they do. Because I was like, wow, the, the it came out really well. 
And I think people slept on it at first. Mm -hmm. I, was, I saw images of it and I saw VR. I said, man, that's an awesome piece. I got to have it. I looked for that thing on eBay, almost $1,000 if you want one. Mm. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I had that happen to me uh, with a figure. Uh -huh. I saw it in the store, and I didn't think nothing of it because I just thought it was another version of Captain America. Uh huh. And then I saw it at a comic book convention for $50. I was like, what the fuck? why is this Captain America figure $50? And then dude lifted up the box. He didn't open it, but he tilted it over and showed me. He's like, because it's Endgame cap with the with Milner. I said, mm -hmm. oh, my God. I saw that. I walked right past it, and I didn't pick it up. Didn't pick it up. <laughs> Dude, I was so mad, so mad. Well, if it's any consolation, you're not the only one. Man, in San Diego and New York, you see them jokers running, trying to run to hurry up to get to those lines so they can hope that this, uh, this toy doesn't sell out, that toy doesn't sell out. Well, I mean, and I'll tell you right now, them Funko Pops, man. They got the worst lines at San Diego and New York. I'm like, I, I guess I get it. I've only got a couple Funko Pops, man. I, I don't really like them that much. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really got to be a. It, first off, it's got to look cool, but it's really got to be a character I love to get a Funko Pop. Like, I got uh, uh, what? Dang, I'm terrible with names. But my my man, the dwarf from uh, Game of Thrones, uh huh, Tyrion, mm -hmm. and I got Voltron. That's it. <laughs> I am not a pop collector. I feel you. Um, I got the three zero. I think it was it three zero. I got the three zero Tyrion because I think they have the contract mm -hmm. for Game of Thrones. So I got Tyrion, Jon Snow, and Brianna Tarth, and the Night King. I got the Night King too. Okay. Um, see. and uh, they they're twelve inch figures too. Well. He, well to stature, because you know Tyrion's so little, but his stature yeah. came out really well. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, freaking uh, McFarlane. I don't. I, while I appreciate, um, thank you, Cat. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Moana, <laughs> Rogue Squadron for sure. Um, while I appreciate McFarlane for what he does and stuff, man. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've got a ton of McFarlane toys, and I've always complained about his toys not being posable, <clears throat> and them always yeah. being scopes. And um, and now that he's making the toys posable, I want him to go back to looking more like sculpts because <laughs> it's like I, I see why he doesn't do the the the, the joints. It, it's not a thing. But like because he's so because McFarlane, the name is so big and so broad, he sells so many toys. People are just, you know, buying these figures. And I'm like, man, these are not good figures. He needs to go back to the way they were um, or whatnot and leave like the posing figures to. uh Chick fig arts or you know uh -huh. things like that. Cause uh, I got an Eric, I got an Arya Stark right now from him. Uh -huh. and, uh, Arya Stark is my favorite character from uh, Game of Thrones. I absolutely love her. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, I could have got the whole line, but I was trying to. I thought they'd be around, man, and now I can't find them nowhere. So nowhere. <laughs> you know, L's happen everywhere. Hmm. My... Your boy is out here about to wreck shop, man. Let's see. So I'm kind of in a transition phase as far as uh, uh, Mo wants the uh, the Marvel ones upstairs. So I've I've moved a few of my Marvel pieces upstairs. Okay. Um, I think. My uh, my brown my brown Wolverine is upstairs. Both oh, my God, upstairs, and I mentioned it. The only Wolverine, the third Wolverine I got is the one where he's the Logan format, where he's in the the wife beater and the dog tags and jeans. Okay, yeah, that one's still down here with me. You got some give. Uh, I put I don't put very many toys upstairs. I probably only got like. What I got up there, six or seven, but they are my um shake fig arts, and it's the ones with like the laser scan faces. Mm -hmm. like Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Cap. I got T'Challa and I got Killmonger up there. Um, 
just because the sculpts on their faces are just so good. So they're in a yeah. glass case up there. Exactly. So yeah, my yeah, my Panther setup is still down. I think I'm gonna keep my Panther setup down here. Mm. I got a couple Panther figures, man. I was uh I was lucky. I grabbed like the, the Legends came out with uh two T'Challas, and I don't know if they didn't get like I don't know if they didn't get the rights to his face on the mm -hmm. first figure, which I didn't mind. It still looked good. Um, but they came out with a second figure, and I just never bothered to get it. And then I was kind of wondering, like thinking about getting, then he passed away, and the price on that figure went up so high. Ooh, yeah. Um, but luckily, I found one at a store in uh, Minnesota for about twenty five dollars, and I still got them at that at that at that good price. Oh, that is good. That's one thing Hot Toys is good at. Those head scopes, man. Mm -hmm. oh, God, my Panther. Um, because I got like the Panther Civil War. I got all the versions of the Black Panther, Hot Toys mm -hmm. versus Black Panther. I got Killmonger. That's how I'm able to put him in those positions with one sitting on the throne in the, in his African garb. I mean, I I went all out. Uh, Killmonger. They did really good on Killmonger's head scope and Chadwick Boseman. They really did good. Right. They did so good. That's why I posed them holding their their helmets instead of having them on. I wanted people to see the head scope. Right. All right. I'll tell you who surprised me that has become out of that Black Panther line, Shiri's 12 inch figure. Oh, that, how, how's it looking? It looks good. I got pictures of her too. I got her posted standing above the throne. Mm -hmm. with, a, with a spear and her little panther gauntlet on, and she she sold out fast. I was like, "Ooh, people are going on waiting lists to get her." So that, that that's that's another thing we talk about as I, as I'm wrapping this figure this uh illustration up. What's your thoughts on that? Do they do they need to recast the child of man, or or <laughs> are they doing it the right way? Um. Okay, my initial thoughts was to recast only because. The Black Panther is a comic book figure. Um, many people played Superman. That doesn't take away from who Superman is or the individuals that played him. Mm -hmm. um, and my first pick was Denzel Washington's son. Um, that he was my first pick. Uh, I say, if you got to replace him, he's my pick. But... Uh -huh. um, because I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, they say they're not going to recast Brian. Um, they, I think they, I think they want to go stick more to the comic book with the man or going to Shuri, which um, I'm not against. It's just it, it, it's a big step from Black Panther to Black Panther Two for it to all fall on Shuri. She would have to mature really fast to take on that type of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Um, they just didn't flesh her out in that direction in the first film. So just to drop it on her, to me, it's a hard sell. Um, because of the direction they had the character going in the first, um, you know, like she's at the 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 um the coronation and the the trials and stuff, and she's making jokes about tradition, and then Mbaku comes out and says this child is making jokes about our tradition. So it's hard to go from that to now you're the Black Panther in the next movie. She's going to need help. So uh, I think they came up with one um, one theory where they could, where she would share the mantle with somebody else, this Black Panther, where it's multiple Panthers or something they were talking about. Mm. I was like, Woo, we're just going to have to see. Um, it's just all too fresh. I mean, Chad just passed in August, so it's still a little fresh. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, if you stick to the comic book, uh, it goes to Sherry. So, yeah, I'm really undecided on that. All right. All right. Well, we just wrapped up this bad boy, Big Do Six illustration here live on Chat and Draw with my man John McAdams up in the building. Uh, I'll be sending this to you, John. You can do whatever you want with it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank you. Oh. Got to stretch out on that one. That was a venture, man. I, I knew it was gonna be. I knew it was gonna be some work, but I, I like how it came out. And 
Uh, this piece will be featured in uh, my chat and draw art book. Uh, you guys can go look that up on uh, Kickstarter. I have the launch page ready. Uh, follow the launch page so you guys can get to follow the updates and things like that. Uh, the Kickstarter was going to be open up with uh, new features uh, for the show, hopefully also expanding our audience. Uh, but I have a, vi a versus feature. We're going to do a sizzle reel for creators. Uh, <clears throat> I'm also going to be releasing all three of the art books, season one, season two, and season three. And all the books will be 60 plus pages at minimum, minimum 60 pages for each book. Uh, the illustrations will be fully colored uh, inside of the book or whatnot. So uh, stay tuned. We are on, we just completed episode 98. We have two more episodes and we are at 100. So uh, John, where can everybody find you at on social media? Oh, well, you can find me on Facebook under my regular name, John McAdams. You can find me under Moana McAdams. Um, you can also find me on YouTube. Uh, the channel is Blunt Force Media. That's where a lot of the uh, Mano uh, Moana Nui podcasts will end up there. Uh, Big Duke Six episodes will end up there. And um, the Lion's Den episodes will end up there. So, um, And if you want to, you can, you can show the camouflage version. Yeah, okay. I'm about to get ready to pull it up. And I'm trying to get this uploaded, chat and draw. Uh, we can also be found at Burning Spear Comics with an X, burningspearcomics.com. And I think that's it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so let me get ready to show you guys what my reference were. This is actually a premiere image that we have here. Right there. That's what I was drawing my ref from on there. Awesome shot. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing uh, this character pop up in the Wildcard Chronicles books and things like that. Yeah, that's what all my little promos is for. That is Big Duke 6, all my little videos. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, all right, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, the 99th episode coming up on Monday. Um, I have Kara Nicole, and she is returning with Fire Bitch, as she also has a Kickstarter going right now that is destroying the game right now with as, as much money as she has raised up on this Kickstarter. And she's still got like 15 more days left or whatnot, but she'll be making her return. And then we have the 100th episode of Chat and Draw uh, with, uh, with just some of the guests being Moana McAdams, uh, Sean Mack, uh, Russell Noisy, Jay, uh, TJ Sterling. Uh, LaShawn Coven, Lori Foster, uh, Tony Clapper, uh, and more and more. Uh, that is our marathon episode it is a season finale of three before we go through our rebirth, uh, with the new intro, new sizzle reels, new features for chat and draw and chasing down another hundred episodes. So I hope you guys join us for that. It's going to be a wild one. That's next Saturday. Um, I will be drawing at minimum eight characters on one cover. For uh, the season three art book, I want to thank John for being here. I've had a blast with him. Appreciate him so much. Thank you, my brother. It's been an honor. Follow this man. Check him out. He's doing tons of cool stuff. All right, everybody, stay epic.